Canyon City has a long history of building fine quality schools to serve its children. Our first publicly funded facility was built in 1880 and named Washington. It served students of all grade levels. Located where the Fremont County Administration Building now sits, it was actually our original high school. It was replaced in 1950 by the current Washington Elementary School. The district's first all high school structure was built in 1902 at 9th and College. It filled that role through 1925. This original high school became Roosevelt Junior High and served in that capacity from 1925 to 1969 when it was demolished. The original Lincoln School was built in 1894 and was replaced in 1952 with the current version. Old Lincoln was torn down in the 1990s to make room for a new administrative building for the district. During the 1950s, the Canyon City community put up the dollars to refurbish Harrison Elementary, build a new McKinley School, build a new Lincoln School, and build a new Washington Elementary. In 1925, South Canyon City School District merged with the Canyon City School District and built a combined high school that now exists on Maine. This facility served as Canyon City High School from 1925 through 1961 when the current high school was built. It was converted to a junior high and then a middle school and has served in that role ever since. Designed to serve the needs of students in the first part of the 20th century, the Canyon City School District has struggled maintaining this facility. The main entry is completely inaccessible to handicapped students and visitors. Visitors to the building can actually enter the hallway before coming into contact with any school employees. There are no handicap accessible bathrooms in the main part of the building as well. Students must either go upstairs or downstairs to have access. Classrooms designed for instruction in 1925 have had to be retrofitted for modern technology. However, some very old technology is still being used in many of the instructional spaces. Believe it or not, the 1925 portion of the building is actually still heated using old cast metal radiating heaters. These are hard to operate, difficult to maintain, and make it challenging to keep classroom temperatures at a comfortable level. Because old door hardware can't be locked from inside a classroom, homemade devices have to be used to secure rooms in case of a lockdown. Classrooms designed to serve 25 kids or less in 1925 are awkwardly shaped and don't even provide the basics needed for teaching classes such as science. Most of these class spaces now ser serve up to 35 kids, use original technology, and have to be retrofitted in an unsafe fashion to serve modern needs. There are many reasons to be concerned about student safety. This is an example of the escape hatch that exists in the current auditorium. If there were an emergency, students would have to exit the stage down this stairwell. That's not the only purpose for this stairwell, however. If you take a trip down it, you'll find that the space behind the stage serves as a prop area and also includes dressing rooms, mock dressing rooms for the students. What's most frightening is the main electrical service for the building runs into this classroom. Though the auditorium has served the community well for many years, it is equipped with 
very outdated doors, windows, seat seating, and sound equipment. It's difficult to see the stage from the far back rows, as can be seen by my view of Operations Director Jeff Peterson. Another area of concern in the auditorium is that the sound room is not functional like a modern one, and it also serves as the primary means by which staff can get to the roof. The old vocational building serves as extra class space for Canyon City Middle School. It's suffering stress fractures, movement cracks and such. The back portion of the building actually serves as the district ground shop. Though not glamorous, this space is the best we have to house our mowers and grounds equipment. The electrical loads in the area are such that when multiple pieces of equipment are used, the power will go out. And so our grounds crew must be sure not to use more than one item at a time. The Canyon City Middle School staff has been working hard to prepare students for future careers. One example of that is to turning part of the vocational facility into a building trades shop. This is an example of what that looks like from the inside. A major problem we have in this shop, though, is there are no external forms of ventilation. Mr. Peterson is taking us into the area where tools are operated. The only dust collector we have is that portable one on the floor. And if you look around, there are no vent hoods to exhaust fumes and dust for the students. Mr. Peterson will show you also that these original windows on the facility are unable to be operated. Moving through other parts of the building, one can see ancient electrical boxes that are maxed out, so the school is unable to add any extra power loads. This custodial closet actually houses uh, one of our power uh, panels and uh, modern code would not allow that. This video was shot shortly after the heavy rain seasons and you can see from the spots on the ceiling that we're still suffering some roof leaks. This is the 1925 section third floor. What's a bit frightening about this is there are parts of the ceiling that still have asbestos-laden plaster. You can see the plaster breaking away from the lathe in this area. Um, that's the old ceiling above the current drop ceiling, which still has the asbestos-laden plaster. These are ceiling tiles that have fallen off in a section of the building. The glue that held those tiles up were uh, included asbestos, and this is a, a primary view of what that ceiling looks like above the drop ceiling. Um, cracking paint, uh, we don't know what's in that. Um, rusting rebar um, that reinforces some of the concrete and uh, once again plaster that contains asbestos. It takes a trip to the basement to get to the first floor which contains the cafeteria access to the old gym, but also some other interesting areas of the old building. In the basement there's a hallway that parallels the old gymnasium and plenty of evidence of concrete having to be torn up to repair old steam pipes is there. What can also be seen are bricks, cinder block quite frankly, starting to crack um, split apart and slope. Uh, this particular wall parallels the whole uh, um, gymnasium auditorium complex and there are some spots where you can actually see some uh, sunlight coming in from some of the cracks.
here's some more evidence of blocks starting to split and settling, causing some serious structural issues in this part of the facility. Before taking you on a tour of the rest of the basement, we'd just like to show you one of the main escape routes for this part of the building. Uh, Mr. Peterson is doing his best to open one of these exit doors, even putting his foot on the wall, and you see that it's nearly impossible to open. He was able to get the door open from the inside, but as you can see, it takes a pretty strong adult to pull this off. The old locker room area in this part of the facility actually serves as our storage for athletic equipment. Um, it's heated with old steam pipes and you can see some newer um, feathering type of uh, radiating heaters were added but they don't even have covers. Um, there are signs of some structural movement in this part of the facility as well. Um, and there's even a restroom in here that uh, certainly isn't up to ADA standards. Once again, this space is not up to modern code. As you can see, Mr. Peterson almost hits his head on the ceiling as he walks through it. As we continue our tour in this area, you'll see uh, some um, old out-of-use lockers uh, and some mechanical um, equipment that uh, uh, simply is not up to date modern standards. As we begin our tour of mechanical rooms, the first one you'll see is uh, just what should be a storage area that the floor had to be broken out of to create clean-out pipes for the sewer system. Um, what I can't express to you in this area is just how musty this room smells, as well as how in disrepair it is. This is the way the water enters our building. Uh, as you can see, these are not modern uh, PVC pipes. Uh, they go through a galvanized system. This door that's off the hallway that's starting to break apart is where we service all of the heating and plumbing lines. Um, this ties the old 1925 section into the more modern wings that were built in the 1970s and 1980s. One more dangerous flight of stairs down and you'll find all of the mechanical parts to the 1925 portion of the building. In this area you'll see constant signs of uh, pike leakage or water seeping in from rains. Um, there's some very, very old equipment. The stairs to access the mechanical area are a little bit dangerous. As we walk into the boiler room, you're going to see some equipment that would be pretty hard to find in operation in um, modern school buildings. Uh, switch box. I'm not even sure what that does. Another old set of switch boxes. It's instructions to how to use our sump pump, which has to operate pretty constantly to keep the water out of the area. Those are parts of old boilers that had of an old boiler that had to be pulled out, and this is an example of the old coal chute. When this building was built, it was operated on a coal boiler. Once again, broken parts of the boiler system that had to be pulled out. More evidence of pipe leakage and the, uh, the old boiler itself. You can see uh, different uh, ages of sections of the boiler in which we had to just replace a couple this year. Um, not real safe electrical systems on it as well and evidence of rust. This is the sump pump that we keep running to um, drain out the, this section of the building because it fills up with a lot of water. And this door uh, will lead to a stairway that's completely unlit. And once again, that's a, that's a pretty antique door. Um, that shows a lot of, uh, well, concrete rot, rusting, and uh, the main reason to take you into this room 
is that uh, the pipes uh, that are along the back wall are uh, evidence of what we've got to do to continue to break out um, portions of the building every time we need to repair a leaky pipe. The last time I was in this area, um, we, uh, if you were to look through this gap right here, you could actually see a pipe constantly leaking. Uh, we took time this summer to go ahead and um, bust out, uh, bust through that wall so that we could replace that leaking pipe. This contraption right here provides hot water to various parts of the 1925 portion of the building. Once again, as with most of this area, there are signs of constant uh, water leaking. As we head back outside, we want to show you some of the wood core doors that are original to the building that we had to retrofit to make work with panic bars. The entire auditorium and gym complex uh, is, uh, has loading docks on each side, and uh, this video shows evidence of uh, concrete starting to rot, mortar starting to break away, uh, and uh, structural stress. Um, this is actually an outside view of that inside hallway we showed you earlier in this video. The first shots showed the damage on the east side of the building. Uh, these are some shots of what's happening on the west side. This last shot is just of the fire escape from the auditorium and I would just like you to imagine what it might look like to try to empty an auditorium through such a stairwell. <laughs> 